Good morning, Lee. Good morning, Paul. Um, today we've got Paul Godwin uh, with My Trade TV. We're going to be interviewing Paul on everything regarding the Fit Show. Um, we're going to be talking about the the show in this year and also about next year, Paul. So thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Great stuff. Well, Paul, we've got quite a lot of questions for you today. Um, obviously, we had a very successful show. But the first thing we want to ask you here at My Trade TV is what made you launch the Fit Show? Well, God, uh, probably a couple of glasses of wine, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, yeah, Matthew uh, Glover and I had, uh, we, well, we became friends uh, several years ago, uh, largely through Renegade Conservatory Guy. Um, I, I, wanted to, I was fascinated in what he was doing. I know he'd been going for a, for a while before we actually started talking and I, I wanted to um, comment on something he'd said on there, and he, he, he very clearly put it to me that he didn't take anything from public relations people, which is quite funny. Real put down. <laughs> um, and so anyway, I sent him something in, and I can't remember what it was, but he liked it. and thought, oh, it's not a press release. So he ran it, and then yeah, we basically uh, began a dialogue over the years and became mates. He asked my advice on something. I think he was getting sued by something, <laughs> which is brilliant. So, uh, he, uh, for some reason, he thought I might know about it. Anyway, long, long um, story made short. We got involved uh, with uh, Glass Talk, uh, just uh, a crazy idea that came out of Renegade. And from that, effectively, what it did is, is it, it got him thinking about uh, the exhibition industry in, in the window trade. Um, I was the press officer on Glass X for... 10 or 12 years I can't remember exactly but way over uh, well over a decade and um, until about the last three or four shows you know where I uh, uh, finished with them all changed uh, yeah another management change down there and of course as we could see the show failing glass X failing a glass talk was becoming more popular although on a different scale it was uh, and so our thoughts just went Ooh, wonder if there's something here. Matthew, I think it's Matthew who first said, let's let's do uh, a big show. Let's do a big exhibition. So, you know, he's, he, this, this is spontaneity. He's, he's absolutely crazy when it comes to things like this. So let's <laughs> just do it. Um, and because of my exhibition industry experience, I had the contacts of one thing or another, and that's, what, that's uh, why we did it. Fair enough. I mean... Obviously, I came to one of your uh, Glass Talk seminars, and they, ve they were very, very good. Um, did you see it as a natural progression? And also, with you working with Matthew uh, on that side of things, did you see your partnership as a, a perfect double act? No, uh, no, absolutely not. And I mean, I've called us the odd couple. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, slim and slight, and uh, he has hair. Um, and, and I'm the opposite. So... We're, no, absolutely. That that would be uh, far too much. But we're good. We're, you know, classic sort of partnership, if you like. But uh, complete opposites. Um, he he uh, you know, he's got very very strong views on on things, which you know I, I support. I have to say, even if it's not by um, <laughs> involvement. Um, a lot of people know what I mean by that. But uh, I do support his, his views. He's very passionate about all sorts of causes. Um, uh, I'm I'm a uh, Busy trying to keep uh, several children and a family and stuff together. So to be honest, I don't have the time for all that. But uh, so no, we're, we're a great partnership, but we are the odd couple. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, it's always good to see things like that. I mean, I'm sure you you know one will be pulling the other into the directions that you need to and helping each other out. But one of the things that, that I did want to bring up. Um, Regarding the Fit Show, and I've got to say this, and I've said it a few times, credit's got to be due to everybody involved in your team for making it, in my mind, I always say one of the best, but it, it's probably the best trade show I've ever attended. Would you like to tell our listeners a little bit about the attendance stats and the figures? Yeah, I can. Uh, I mean, certainly on the team thing, it's got to be said that um, I, you know, sometimes I cringe when um, you hear people saying, I must thank the team, you know, this is a team effort, There's and all this stuff, about there's no I, I in team, and all these things. fact is that I, I have to say that we really did, I think in each um, department, I was able to, we were able to pull together the best 
as it happens, I mean, probably you go in there believing that the people you're employing are the best, but we actually did have the best in every department. There's operations, absolutely the best people. I've worked with them, with Joe Smith for years and met Nikki uh, through her on the operations side. Um, Lynn Rawlinson, who sadly is, is leaving, uh, and it's nothing uh, to do with anything I've done or said uh, against <laughs> popular, popular rumour and, and what I, the remark... A chauvinistic remark I made at the Fit Show dinner, um, but which was a joke and set up with her. Uh, it was, uh, you know, Lynn is moving on, but we've also got somebody fantastic to replace her, one of her best mates, as it happens, but very talented. We had the best people, you know, and of course, at early days, we, we had Matthew selling it, which you, you really can't beat him at it. Um, in terms of the stats, uh, you know, when, when we the, the show came together, um, we had uh, 5,810 people over three days, which gave us, you know, in, in exhibition terms, you, you go, um, uh, you measure the, the people per square meter and actually was way up with the best. It was a very, very good figure in that sense. We had around about 170 exhibitors. Um, then you can pull together. All these stats will be available. Um, if they're not online now, they will be very shortly. Uh, when we launched a new website, 64% of visitors were senior managers or, or, or directors and above. 60% um, of visitors were fabricators and installers. And in fact, we had, it's very difficult we, we, to, to actually break it down individually, but uh, trade fabricators of doors and windows, uh, 1,066. Installers of doors and windows, 1,939, but then again, we have installers of conservatories, 1,208. This is not, this is really, really dull stuff. You need to sit and look at it, obviously, um, and, and then you can uh, analyze the figures as you wish. What it comes down to, however, is, is the, um, these days, you can have some very sophisticated tracking for lead generation. And uh, we've done that. It's even more sophisticated next year. Actually, that's something I, I can probably tell you about later, uh, which will be, um, uh, you will be the first to hear this um, <clears throat> on the lead generation. But um, we, we can track, you know, where people went. We can track the leads that every, every company had. Apart from we had a couple of dozen that didn't take the scanners from us, which is, you know, I, I don't actually know why they have their own reasons. <clears throat> the scanners, the, the lead generation and tracking system is absolutely superb. We can see who got the leads. We can actually look at the leads themselves, of course, albeit it's, it's confidential information beyond that. But uh, overall, people did very well indeed on the on the lead generation, and that's what it comes down to, Lee, in the end. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've <clears> got to <throat> say, you know, it, again, absolutely cracking out. The amount of visitors that pass through... Um, and, and you're right, I think the end story is everyone needs a lead from it, and, and it looks like they've got that, Paul. It looks like you know people have done well out of it, the people I'm speaking to, all of the companies that exhibited there that I've spoken to, there's, I, I've not heard one bad word. Um, everybody's coming out with good sales leads, and I suppose some of them will be following them up for the next few months, if not a couple of years. Um, but yeah, great stuff. One of the things I was impressed with, Paul, and I've got to take my hat off to you on this because this is my area. Uh, obviously, I, I was uh, doing marketing when I was younger, um, business and finance and all that sort of things. Your marketing strategy for this show was exceptional, and I can remember clicking on websites uh, while I was not working even, and the banners were following me around, the Fit Show banners. Um, everywhere you looked, there was Fit Show plastered all over the internet, all over the trade magazines. How important was the marketing campaign to the show's success, do you think? It was, it was uh, very important indeed. You know, I mean, the, the people we had uh, were the first uh, step, our team, um, because without them, of course, none of it, we wouldn't have had the marketing campaign. Um, we use uh, a very good uh, agency, we've, we're friends with them, have been for years. But they had to work damned hard to uh, to get our business. It wasn't a given. They literally came up with the best um, marketing, the best creative work, uh, which you saw. Everybody saw it was fantastic. Air the theme, everyone's going. You know, which which was 
very tongue in cheek. I mean, I think one or two people took it as um, a tad arrogant to start with. It wasn't. It was tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah. So, so much of what we do is tongue in cheek um, because we think it should be fun as well. It, uh, so that the, the short answer is uh, it was incredibly important. Um, it got people's imagination. It injected some fun, um, and um, it was just creative. After those, you know, the dreadful last years of Classics, you know, Classics was. Awful, and I think that it was so badly run, to be honest with you, and over many years before its final demise, that I think you know people began to feel bad about the whole thing, and even perhaps taking us down as an industry. And I think what our marketing campaign did is it injected some fun, some enthusiasm, dynamism, made us feel good again. I think overall it was great fun. We got a tough act to follow. Definitely have. I mean, everybody uh, seemed to get involved. They were all pushing the brand for you as well, which it, obviously it helps. Um, I suppose the the one thing that I considered when you launched the show, uh, because when I when I heard you'd launched it, I never had any doubt that yourself, Matthew, Ian, your sales team would fill the halls with the contacts and the amount of enthusiasm you guys have got in the industry. That was probably nailed on for me that you were going to sell everything. But the minor doubt from both myself and the industry was, were people going to turn up? Were they going to attend the show? With it being midweek, the economy being in a tough state at the moment, and people catching up with probably another bad winter, um, were you, were you ever, was you ever scared about the attendance? Was it ever in the back of your mind? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely right up until, I mean, for me, um, including the second day. You know, I mean, it, it, it's we spent... Around five hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I mean, I can show this uh, wow. to, to anybody. Yeah. Uh, we we said we would spend half a million on marketing. That was our budget, yeah. and in fact, I overspent. Um, uh, that was that was my department, and I, the biggest campaign by far of any ex trade exhibition for the window trade. You know, Glassix was never anywhere a patch on that. Maybe two hundred thousand at its peak. Yeah. So. You know, we blitzed the market, and what it meant, what I did know, the confidence was that we would have reached anybody that could go to the event. Anybody. Yeah. Uh, we we used uh, the, the the media extensively. Obviously, we had our own lists that we 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 worked with Insight Data. We also built our own lists. Everything we did was so absolutely thorough. And on that basis, that if we're creating the right story and the right messages. We were then reaching the people as well. Then surely we knew we were reaching everybody. Now, then would they actually turn up? We didn't know until the day. And in yeah. fact, from my point of view, the second day. It was only the second day that I started to relax. So you know on paper you're doing everything that you possibly could do. We wouldn't have known, didn't know anything else. Yeah, if, if they hadn't turned up, I think it was generally accepted that, therefore, there's obviously not a need for, the, for an exhibition for the industry. Fortunately, they did turn up, but I, I was absolutely, you know, my, my head said they would. My heart said, ooh, <laughs> let's see. We'll, let's find out. Well, it, it, it was a very good turnout. And I, I, I said even before, you'd done everything possible. You've just mentioned it there, everything possible to get people there. And it, it was nice to see the passion in the industry, not just from the exhibitors, from the visitors, actually turning up and, you know, after the, the letdown of the... Uh, the last trade show but I mean I, going back to that I was unlucky enough for my first ever industry show in the glazing industry was the last classics uh, it was so tired and old and it had, it had just finished I mean it was dead um, what I did notice about the fit show was the exhibitors were they looked completely different they were same companies but they put so much more effort into the stands and so much more effort into marketing the stands pre-show. Uh, have you got anything you want to say to the exhibitors? Yeah, I do. I, I, I have uh, thanked them um, in broad terms, uh, and I've thanked uh, as many as I could individually. Yeah. It really was a stunning effort um, from not just, not just the giant stands. Uh, we know whose they were. Um, even even down to the small stands, you know the the um, crystals. Some fantastic efforts have gone in, um, and that ultimately is what makes uh, the event. If you go to if you ever go to uh, 
uh, the United States, for example, to to their show, um, Glass Build. Uh, they have booths rather than, you know, they have a few um, built stands, but yeah. substantially they're booths. Very, very good event. I mean, it's, I'd, I'd urge anybody to um, go and try it, albeit a different country. But it's just kind of dull by comparison. Um, this was a show, and, and that event, that essentially is what an exhibition should be. It's a showground. It's a showcase. And the, the fact that every exhibitor, uh, I, I can't think of an exception, made a bloody great big effort to, to uh, put everything into it. Um, and I was very, very proud. So they, they, you know, it was very much about us um, collectively as partners. All the way down the line, we've done, you know, we, we're partners with everybody. So we facilitated the whole thing, pulled, pulled it together. But they went for it. They loved doing face-to-face -face. this industry is about face-to-face -face. um and uh, they've missed it you know they've missed the years uh, the, the declining glass x uh, complete lack of any kind of involvement by the by the owners and the managers um and uh, people came back with a passion they did a really great job i have to agree with them yeah yeah and even to the point where there was people not exhibiting there who, who i was speaking to who were instantly saying to me we're definitely coming next year we're going to exhibit next year they saw the stands and really wanted to get involved in you know in the 2014 event but yeah like you say a cracking effort but one of the things i wanted to ask you is and i, I don't know whether this uh whether you ran into anything like this but were there any obstacles or curveballs that gave you an headache whilst planning the show yeah i mean not it is not really uh, as it happens other than there were some doubters, and the doubters were in quite powerful places to hear their um, voices being heard, um, about Telford, about okay. uh, Telford as an exhibition centre. And um, we went along there. It, it, as people have seen, I mean, it's a superb exhibition centre. There's yeah. no question about that. Yeah. Um, uh, it was more, I suppose, uh, the location was being questioned. Um, as it happens, you know, for me, it's 45 minutes uh, longer when I travel from the south. For anybody coming from the north, it's 45 minutes less. I mean, what's the big deal? So as I say, there, there was, um, that, that was the only issue, and we believed that we would overcome that. Um, and indeed, it's just simply because come and look. If you put on a decent enough show, then people will come along and see it. They don't care where it is, within reason, obviously. It yeah. is. Uh, uh, that was the only issue, really, uh, that came up. But um, we, we dealt with that. Uh, and people turned up anyway. Yeah, fair play. I mean, I, I I never really heard the the whisperings about that, but I think it's a great venue. I'm actually up there again with uh, with the locksmith side of our business. Uh, we're up for the MLA exhibition, and it's it's a cracking venue. I've been there a couple of times. So I, I, I don't see the problem there myself, but, but yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to be really cheeky now because we're going to ask you about the gala dinner. Now, the gala dinner was a, a sellout and obviously a huge hit with everyone. People in this industry, like you said earlier, love getting together, love having a drink, love having a, a laugh and catching up with friends old and new. Did it exceed your expectations at the night function? And also, the cheeky bit, can you tell us who the comedian is next year? Because uh, Ed Byrne was cracking, by the way. I don't know how you're going to follow that. Unless you get up yourself, Paul. Well, I was up there, if you didn't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, Ed Byrne uh, stealing your thunder, Paul. <laughs> he was good, wasn't he? He was fantastic. I mean, he really, really was cracking. You know, I I, um, I, I have to say that I'm always nervous uh, in the sense of, and I, I did fire a couple of shots across his bow in the sense of uh, just going for the double glazing industry type of thing because it's mm. cheap shot these days. Yeah. Double glazing, the, the so-called double glazing industry is as professional as any now. Yeah, you know, we've got we've got rid of so many of the cowboys. So, yeah, the old cliche double glazing jokes are not welcome. No, um, and he didn't. He was he was absolutely superb. He's the right guy uh, for the uh, for the event. Um, did it exceed our expectations? You damn right it did. Yeah, you know, we thought, well, let's put something on. Let's have, yeah, we might get five hundred. We might get five. Oh, yeah, pushed. You know, we could get five hundred. Matthew, he's always incredibly enthusiastic about everything. And I, I, you know, and this is where the partnership comes in. Like, I'm, well, I'm not sure, Matthew. You know, anyway, we we went for it, and it was um, we surpassed the five hundred. I think within a fortnight, yeah, of launching, and of course we had eight hundred uh, sit down, which is amazing. Um, and, and it was just a good do. 
I think everybody enjoyed it. It was a good do. Um, uh, we intend to do the same again next year. We intend to keep the prices about the same. I, I mean, nobody will believe this, but we actually lose a bit of money on everybody. Everybody that sat down, yeah. uh, we lose a bit of money on it. It, it. These these events are ridiculously expensive to um, uh, put together. Uh, it, it, yeah, people can do their own if they're if they're that bored. They can uh, do their own back of the cigarette packet calculations. It doesn't matter. It was a great party, um, a great do. We will do it again, and we do, but we do it as part of the fit show, not a standalone. Yeah. As it, so yeah, it was fabulous. As for next year's comedian, um, if I told you, uh, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> well, I'll I'll leave that one then. I like, I'd like to truth stay is, alive. <laughs> truth is, Lee, we haven't got a clue. We haven't got a clue. We're working on uh, next year's uh, fit show, and yes, yes, we yes. will do the dinner in due course, and I don't know, a couple of weeks before it, we, we might think of something. Fair enough. That's that's good enough for me. I enjoyed the night, and it was absolutely cracking. I'll look forward to that again next year. Mm-hmm. Um, with the success of the first show, Paul, you've launched the next one for 2014, and if I'm right, is it every two years after that? Um, sorry yeah that, that's our, that's our intention okay yeah. now what what's the thinking about having the second show so soon after the first the following year well it is it, a mixture really we um demand yeah uh, is is one there were a number of companies that uh, wanted to get in and couldn't because we sold all the space or rather um the space was was bought you know as much as us pushing it yeah um there were a number of companies that came to us uh, during and immediately after the event that said they wanted to get in there. And, of course, a number of companies that wanted to repeat. They wanted to go back. I think for many organizations, uh, you know, they pulled the leads. They were able to assimilate the leads and the quality of the leads. Uh, perhaps they're smaller organizations or something, and they know what they've got, you know, basically. And they know it's down to them to actually convert those leads now. You know, we presented the people to them. It's up to them to actually work with them, try and uh, turn them into something. Some organisations, it takes longer, they need longer. But essentially, we had it, it, enough immediate demand. Um, in marketing terms also, bear in mind that this, this event didn't exist, uh, certainly a couple of years ago. Uh, but, um, so uh, we, we've created something from scratch. Uh, yeah. We've created a brand from scratch, which I don't think will disappear. I mean, I think... Fit show uh, is there in everybody's minds now, and the campaign works in that sense. But it's brand new, and we've we've got to sustain it, put it together for a couple of years to make sure it stays in people's minds. Yeah. Um, and the other issue is this: is that we we created from scratch also a, a, a business. We've got a, an infrastructure, and as fit as I think we are um, financially, economically, management terms, um, we we have a business now. Yeah. that we have to sustain. So that's a relatively minor thing, but of course it would mean if we didn't do anything in, um, until for two years immediately, then you, we, we would have to break everything up and start again in, in a year's time, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but essentially it's about marketing the brand, about making, you know, sustaining and building the brand and reinforcing the brand, and actually because we have now already sold more than 50% of the space. That's in contracts signed contracts and in fact um, a couple of uh, very big names will be announced over the next couple of weeks well I mean that leads me perfectly on to to my next uh, subject because I've had a good look at the floor plans and the exhibitor lists and and like you said things are moving fast you've just said there 50 percent have already booked Um, what do potential exhibitors need to do to get involved in the 2014 show Paul well I think I mean the, the Without being too obvious, I suppose, well, trying not to be obvious, uh, they, they've got a book and they've got a book soon. Yeah, um, yeah the fence sitters uh, missed out last time. The longer you leave it, then uh, the less choice you have in the stand that you, uh, that you book. If you have any intention, if you're really looking at it seriously, get involved and get involved soon. Look at it now. Don't see, You're not going to get a deal. Nobody got a deal. We will not do deals. It's as simple yeah. as that. It's a cancer in any business. Um, you know, you, you start uh, slashing prices because you think you're not going to sell something. Rubbish. Um, it, it's, uh, it's just going to burn away at you. 
The fact is that if you think that you're going to get involved, then do it soon. Of course we will say that. But in fact, we've got a, we've got a year to go in real terms, 10 months, 11 months yeah. uh, to actually sell it. So we're not worried. that Without being cocky about it, we, we will sell the space. Of course we will. So if you have any intention of getting involved, then look at the floor plan now. Come to us, talk to us, get the best space that, that you possibly can now uh, and get involved now. In doing so, the earlier you get involved, then, then uh, the better you're going to make it for yourselves. Good stuff. And last year, you had some, well, last year, this year, I should say, we, uh, it's, obviously it was only in April, but we had some very well-received competitions and seminars at the show, including the Master Fitter Challenge, which was very popular with visitors and watched over by GQA. Uh, qualifications and you had the sales pro of the year which was uh, I think Quatartis got involved in that side with you do we have anything like this planned for the 2014 fit show or anything new coming up Paul yes we do and uh, we're, we're going to run both um, events again Good stuff. Uh, yeah we sharpen them chisel them um, make them a little bit slicker perhaps um, I love both events I mean the videos uh, for sales profession of the year were just superb I mean they're, yeah. two, they're real serious TV quality stuff. Um, uh, and, of course, the Master Fitter Challenge uh, worked very well indeed. You know, the people involved with that were so passionate. That is, the entrants were so passionate with it. Yeah. Um, the fact is that, that what both events do is they um, get to the sharp end. You know, the, 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 both the, uh, the very start of the process of putting uh, replacement windows in and doors and conservatories, but as well as, uh, obviously, and then we get to the installers, you know, the last part of the process. Um, and uh, we think it's very important for the Fit Show. Now, you know, the Fit Show is about um, fabricators and installers. That's what's in the title. Those are the most important um, uh, people as far as we're concerned. Um, we believe that uh, the fitter has never been uh, more important in the process, and therefore our, our slogan internally has been, uh, you know, get the fitters there, get the installers yeah. there, everybody else will follow. Okay. So, Go on, sorry, Paul. So, so both competitions are, are going to go again. Fantastic. I mean, what I suppose um, I, I'm going to chuck this in as well because I have got probably one more thing I want to ask, but it's just come to my mind again now. You mentioned the uh, the scanners. You were going to tell us a little bit about the scanners for this year. Yeah, what we've we've um, only I mean it's breaking news. Um, what uh, we've been back to our registration company. Um, the, the, it's part of a very large organisation in the exhibition service industry. Yeah. And um, whilst we had these physical, um, specifically designed and built scanners, which which read barcodes, we did get a bit of feedback from uh, that uh, they're, they're not very versatile. What's happened now is there is a development where using smartphones, and certainly on an iPhone, and I'd hope it's on Android as well by the time we get there. What will happen is that. We're going to offer this as the uh, primary um, selection for exhibitors that they would download an app for their smartphone, and they would scan visitors as they uh, and uh, as they scan a visitor, all of that that visitor's information appears as we have it appears on their smartphone. Now, this is very very early days for us, so um, uh, there will be a lot more information, a lot more training going on for exhibitors to make sure that they make the most of this. What the smartphone app does. Is it offers versatility to actually uh, get more information on on, on that exhibitor uh, relevant to their own needs and uses? That exhibitor's uh, sorry, on that visitor, um, uh, and they can track more information. They can put um, uh, profile information in of their own as they talk to the visitor. And what will also happen is that they can fix appointments with that visitor there and then through the smartphone app. So it's, okay. it's very much more versatile than uh, the, the previous system. There'll be a fallback if there happens to be somebody still using uh, 1986 Nokias. Um, then they can uh, revert. We will provide them with a scanner uh, yeah. with a stand package as well. Um, but we hope that most people would take the, um, the app. Uh, version because it will really enhance uh, what they do at the show. We, we like that. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be very engaging and very helpful to anyone who's exhibiting there. So good stuff. Oh. It's great to hear that. Um, 
Anything you would like to say to the exhibitors and visitors for the 2013 show? Uh, because obviously, you know, we, we've, uh, we're coming to a close now. And also, um, any message to people looking to, to either exhibit or even visit the show in 2014? Well, more of the same. I think sharper. It would be sharper and, and better, you know, because we, you know, we're not, bear in mind that whilst I've got a, uh, quite a long experience in the exhibition industry and certainly media generally, um, I was a press officer. Uh, neither Matthew or I have organised um, a full show uh, before. We haven't. We're new to, new to this business. So, um, there will be refinements, for example, the car parking, although having said that, Matthew and I constantly um, went on about to, to uh, the hall owners uh, throughout the year building up to the event about the car parking. Yeah. Um, you know, we said we didn't think they had enough car parking. You haven't got enough. Matthew even counted the car parking spaces using Google Earth uh, <laughs> and said, no, you, you haven't got enough. Um, that I think we proved the point there, and whilst it was dealt with quite well um, on the day, uh, and it was a good problem to have in a sense, that will be resolved for next year. So it's another big um, announcement, really, in the sense that there is a uh, a whole new multi-story car park being built within a few hundred meters of the uh, site, um, and there is also another site adjacent, um, which is going to be um, I think it's called the arena. Uh, next to the halls, uh, which will be added as well. And I think there's 500 spaces in there. So uh, the, the car parking will not be a problem next year. And that was, that was the only major um, issue, really. Um, message, message to um, our exhibitors is, is that, uh, you know, as, as the ads I put out said, uh, we couldn't have done it without you. I mean, it, 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 again, it sounds like a cliche, but we really couldn't. The effort they made on the stands was stunning. Uh, we couldn't have done better, uh, uh, even if we'd gone around and given them um, uh, details as what we wanted. It was fabulous. It was uh, the effort was superb. Um, and I think that uh, the other thing I'd like to say is this: is that, that when all said and done, Matthew and I are of, and especially Matthew, are of this industry, and and therefore it's the industry's welfare and well-being that counts very much for Matthew and I. I don't operate outside this industry. Matthew is actually a manufacturer of um, windows, doors, and conservatories um, through his other company, Conservatory Outlet. And therefore, our commitment is, is absolutely total uh, to the window, door, and conservatory industry. Well, thank you very much for that. I mean, I've asked you quite a few questions today, Paul, so thanks for your time on that. Um, First of all, we have got something new that we're adding to the interviews. Obviously, you know, we interview quite a few people from the industry now. Uh, but before I do that, do you want to give everyone the web details, the web address details to have a look at the fit show and the floor plans and all the, uh, all the info for next year? Yeah, sure. It's www.fitshow.co.uk. Um, you have uh, the last year's, the 2013 uh, website predominantly showing uh, now. I mean, it's the, the, what is the 2013 website? Website, I beg your pardon. But if you have a look at, um, at the, there is a tab on there which gives all the 2014 um, exhibition details, exhibiting details. So go on that, and in a few weeks' time, a couple of weeks' time, we hope we'll launch the 2014 uh, website. And 2013 will just be a fond memory. Fantastic. Look forward to having a look at that. One last thing we want to do with you, Paul. Like I said, this is just a new feature that we've put into the podcast interviews that we're doing. Very, very uh, short and sweet, just for a little bit of fun. Um, a dual choice questionnaire for our interviewees, if you call it. So it's, it's basically a what do you prefer kind of interview. So quick fire for you, Paul. Do you prefer tea or coffee? Coffee. Lager or wine? Both. <laughs> Fry up or healthy continental breakfast? Fry up. Football or rugby? Football. Watford or Luton? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that one in for you. Us racing or motorsports? Motorsport. iPhone or Android? iPhone, but I am getting bored with it. The lack of progress. Me too, funnily enough. DIY or DIY help? <laughs> I'll hire help after I've had a go at DIY. I have to get somebody else in to uh, correct my cock up. <laughs> Comedy or drama? Uh, both, I have to say. I can't choose, really. Um, both. Fair enough. Dad's Sorry. Army or Rising Damp? 
No, I uh, bored, bored. I left those behind a long time ago. <laughs> okay, only Fools and Horses or Faulty Towers? Uh, again, I'm yeah, bored with both, but probably Fools and Horses. European holidays or far away destinations? Um, anyway, far away. Shirt and tie or casual? Shirt without a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Flip flops or sandals? Neither. No, just, just. <laughs> I, I hate the things with a passion. Fair play. And last one for you. Fit Show 2013 or Fit Show 2014? Well, Fit, fit Show 2013 because we wouldn't have 2014 without it. Fair play. Paul, thank you very much for your time. It's been an honour and a pleasure and hopefully we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you for the opportunity, Lee. Thank you. Take care, Paul. Cheers.